the weekly Wednesday wrap up. I'm Rebecca Gordon. I'm Erin Bennett. And on this week's episode, we're going to talk about UHC's background checks and understanding one of the trickier CMS marketing guidelines and why a lot of agents think that it doesn't apply to them. Hmm. But it could <laughs> keep you out of trouble. So stay tuned. All right, well, Erin, welcome back. Sylvia's on vacation. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about this rule, 40.7. It's it's the rule that says you can basically not market during no EP. Correct. That it is illegal. However, I think we both have seen a lot of soft content out on social media of agents maybe pushing that line. In fact, uh, when I did a little bit of research, it, it's hard to see where it exactly says you cannot do this in the guidelines. But like we said earlier, it is completely illegal. You're going to get in trouble. Right. I mean, you can lose your license. CMS can revoke everything from you. You're going to lose commissions. Clients will still get their plans, but you could lose everything that you have in it. And it's just not worth it. If a client calls you and asks you about it, you definitely can, but you shouldn't be out there advertising that they have until March 31st right. to make any changes. Make changes. Because that's kind of being sneaky, and if you get yes. caught, you're gonna get in trouble. So, let's dive a little bit deeper. We have Sylvia on location who's gonna clear up a lot of our confusion. Take it away, Sylvia. I wanna talk about CMS marketing rule 40.7, and the confusion that I've had two agents in the same week said, this rule doesn't apply to agents, read it. And so we put it on the screen there and it says plans and plan sponsors. It nowhere says agents. Why is that? And that is because CMS doesn't license agents. You don't have a, a federal license number. You didn't get appointed with the federal government. It's all governed by the plan. So CMS says the plan, the plan sponsors and insurance companies, you are responsible for all the behavior of all your downstream entities, everybody in the whole hierarchy and you have to make sure they follow this rule. So the rule doesn't specifically list agents, but you're in there because you are the body, the army of the plan sponsor. So you cannot talk about AEP. I mean, OEP. You cannot talk about OEP. Yes, it's almost over. There's a, a month left. Just remember, you can market just like you would all year long. Are you turning 65? Are you aging in? Might there be a special exception for you? Talk to us about your Medicare needs. You just can't say, hey, OEP is the first three months of the year and you have until March 31st to make a plan change if you're not 100% happy with your plan. You can't say that. You really shouldn't mention the word OEP in any of your marketing materials, any of your videos, social media, anything, because you could get in big trouble, not from CMS, not from the government, but from the plan sponsor. And the plan sponsor could get in trouble from the government because you broke this rule. So as always, if you have questions about the CMS marketing guidelines, reach out to us at Gordon Marketing. Okay, well, awesome. Uh, again, it's, it's one of those those rules where people, they try to like push that on, it's like a kid, right? <laughs> pushing that envelope, pushing. You're like, no, 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 you're gonna get in trouble. All right, so let's talk about the annual background checks with UHC. So uh, as an agent, it's about every other year that I'll get the letter. Here was the email. It actually came out yesterday. So I got the email from UHC just saying that uh, 30 days from the date of the letter. So my letter was dated yesterday, February 21st. So 30 days from that, they'll be doing a background check on me. Typically, they're going to do a public files report and a credit report. Make sure nothing's out there um, crazy. Also, if you have your account frozen, so your credit is frozen, you wanna make sure that you open that up so that UHC can come in. A lot of people will freeze it. So I do that. My husband and I, we have our accounts permanently frozen and that's really interesting. And if, if for whatever reason we have to have a credit check, we have to go through the extra steps and then they'll unfreeze it for 72 hours or how? Right, so that's why they say in so I got mine yesterday. Just look at your notice if you get one. Not everyone's gonna get one. They don't do every agent 
every just year. Random. It's just random. Generally, about every other year you get picked for it. I didn't do it last year, so this year I knew I'd probably have a letter coming, but it is huge. So they say 30 days. It says you must notify UHC within 30 days if you want to be terminated. If you don't want your credit check, oh. they'll just terminate you. Forget um, it. Right. Don't look. But 30, 30 days, so March 21st, Make sure that you unfreeze your credit for a week or, you know, what. So that is that time enough period. time? Right. Okay. Yeah, I would think that they're going to push it. They're going to push everything through. And if you have a different date on your letter, just make sure 30 days from that letter you have that opening. Oh, that's There's a few states out there. I believe it is um, Vermont. I think it's Vermont and California. Right. Um, requires you to agree to the check first. Right, so they can't just go do your check, but you get notified from that. Again, if you're in those states, they're gonna pull that notification on it as well. And just keep in mind, the FMO does not know, uh, they don't know your credit history. They don't, they're not privy to any of that information that might make someone feel uncomfortable. Well, and, and we're also not, you know, FMOs aren't privy to what they're looking for. Oh, We right. know that, if you have any um, open court records, bankruptcies, DUIs, anything like that could cause you to be terminated. So you just wanna make sure that you're on top of that. And if you do get the letter that they're terminating you, appeal it, but an appeal it quickly. Do not wait 30 days. I was gonna and, oh, say, what I'm do you do? do immediately. So what it says here is that it looks really bad if you don't, um, if you don't appeal it. Um, you need explanation documentation to win an appeal. And you can speed things up by spent, by sending in proof early, like you said. Right, do it quickly. Um, the sooner you get it done, you know, you, you just have that peace of mind as well. Is it common? I mean, is it a big deal if you... It's really not. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I went through a really bitter divorce about 10 years ago. And when I first put my application through, it was denied because the divorce caused some major credit issues mm -hmm. with my ex-husband and I. And I wrote a letter and I explained it and I just spelled it out. I sent receipts and bills and different things into them and they turned it and around. They turned around. So it, it's, if you can explain it, they're much more understanding and willing to work with you because they understand, you like, know, life, life, life happens. happens. Yeah, just do it quickly. Right. Now look, if, if you need any help, and if you fail, call us for advice. I always call this kind of the coveted contract. Like, don't, don't let, don't, yeah. don't let anything happen to this, to this agreement with, with this carrier. So right, they're they're a big carrier, and that's why you work with us as well. Right, you work with us so that we can help resolve these issues for you. So make sure you do reach out to us if you need the help. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about. I love this. You know, I'm, I was just with my in-laws. Uh, they're both 80 over the weekend. And they were excited because they both had their second vaccines, right? right. And uh, it's funny that we're bringing this up here because I was like, hey, you know, that's exciting. Don't go advertising or don't go showing that you've had that sheet of paper. We're seeing this, that people are so excited. They're posting on social media. On social media. And, and what are they then posting? So it, it has their birth date, it has their address. And because most photographs are have geonetting attached to them, they can locate that person was in Indianapolis when that was taken. And then they can try to do some background research on them and open up lines of credit. Yeah. Uh, you know, identity theft is huge. Thieves are smart. Thieves Just don't post smart. this. My, my daughter sent me a picture of her. She's in medical school and she had to get hers. <laughs> I didn't even know she was getting it, but she sent me a picture and I'm like, okay, just tell me next time when you get it because yeah. we don't want it out there. Let's just now, it was that. It was just a messaging it to me, but again, thieves are smart. Don't post on social media. Well, heck yeah, and I could see that being super excited if your family lives all over like, look, I did it, yep. I'm good, we can see each other. Exactly. And then someone's like, oh, my next victim. Exactly. My next victim. So just be smart. So it says, like you said, most photographs you post online have that geotagging data embedded in them. God, that that is it's crazy. It's crazy and it's kind of cool. So be safe, be smart. This is a great thing also as you're trying to continue to stay relevant with your clients. Uh, if you're doing a newsletter, if you are sending out text messages, whatever, however you're constantly reaching them, this is a great thing to put out there. Like, hey, get your vaccines and oh, by the way, do not post it. It's another drip to your clients. It's another drip to your clients. So, hey, that's all we have this week. 
Thank you so else? much. No, no. Hey, don't miss the webinars that I do every Thursday. It's always some advice to help with on the Medicare side. So uh, stay tuned every uh, Thursday at one. That'll work. Good selling. Don't forget to consider liking us and sharing us. Uh, we really appreciate that and all the good that we're able to do for agents out there just keeping all of this information consolidated. So good selling. Have a great day and we'll talk to you next week.